Работаем, парни, работаем. Иди сюда, сука! The strategically important village of Robotyne in southern Ukraine has been officially liberated, Kiev has announced. Robotyne has been liberated and our troops are moving southeast, Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malyar said on Monday morning. She added that Ukraine's troops are now advancing towards Novoprokopivka and Osheratuvate, despite fierce enemy resistance. Kiev's forces entered Robotyne in the western Zaporizhia region last week rescuing ecstatic villagers who described their unexpected joy at finally being liberated from Russian occupation. Fighting in the area, especially for the village of Robotyne, has been fierce. The village is at the southernmost tip of an offensive push launched by the armed forces of Ukraine AFU from near the town of Oriki, in early June, in an attempt to punch through Russian defensive lines along the TO-408 highway, towards its objective in the city of Tokmik. Breaking through and taking Tokmik will be hugely significant, bringing the armed forces of Ukraine one step closer to their goal in the region, reaching the Sea of Azov and cutting Russia's occupying forces in two. Fighting in the town continued and over the weekend a Ukrainian commander leading some of the troops in the area said only two houses in the village remained under Russian control. He said on Saturday, we're fighting for them, and then we'll have full control of Robotyne. We don't stop here. Next, we have Bergyansk, and then more. I made it clear to my fighters at once. Our goal is not Robotyne, our goal is the Sea of Hazar. On Sunday, Western analysts said Ukraine's armed forces have made further tactically significant gains in the south of the country and may have broken through the toughest line of Russian defenses in some areas. Geolocated footage as well as statements from both Ukrainian and Western officials suggest Kyiv's counteroffensive is finally making progress and gathering pace in the western Zaporizhia region. Jennifer Kafarella, director of strategic initiatives at the Institute for the Study of War (ISW), said the developments are starting to look like momentum. On Wednesday, Kyiv claimed a semi-breakthrough south of Robotyne. Ukraine Army General Staff Chief Spokesperson Andriy Kovalev in comments widely reported in domestic media said Kyiv's forces have achieved success in fighting around the village Novoprokopivka and were digging in at the captured positions. The ISW said Russia had committed a considerable amount of materiel, effort, and manpower to hold the series of defensive positions that Ukrainian forces are currently penetrating. Ukrainian forces are coming up against Russian defensive lines of trenches and minefields that are kilometers deep, and its forces have clawed back just several villages in the south and pressured the flanks of Bakhmut, a war-scarred town in the east. Malyar said Monday that Ukrainian troops were advancing south of Bakhmut and that they had recaptured one square kilometer, around one-third a square mile, there over the last week of fighting. She also acknowledged a Russian push to take back territory in the northeast of Ukraine, describing fighting in the Kharkiv region as very intense over the past week. Ukrainian officials have estimated that Russia has committed around 100,000 additional troops to front lines in the northeast to pressure defensive lines. British intelligence services have said Russia could try to divert Ukrainian military resources by solidifying their positions in Kharkiv. While movement on the front line has been stilted, both sides have pursued aerial assault campaigns. Russian forces conducted a missile strike on the rear areas of advancing Ukrainian Armed Forces AFU, on Monday, according to the Institute for the Study of War ISW. Ukrainian officials reported that Russian ships launched four Kaliber cruise missiles from the Black Sea and aircraft launched two KH-59 cruise missiles from the airspace above the occupied sector of the Kherson region in the direction of Krivi Ri, and that Ukrainian air defenses intercepted all but two of them. The AFU reported that the cruise missile struck a civilian industrial facility in the Poltava region. Meanwhile, the Russian Ministry of Defense claimed on Monday that its navy used sea-to-land precision-guided missiles to destroy an ammunition depot in the Donetsk region, including a number of armored personal vehicles, a Krab self-propelled artillery unit and a Grad combat vehicle. Russian Ministry of Defense spokesperson Igor Konashenkov claimed Russian forces had repelled attacks by Ukraine's 82nd Airborne Assault Brigade and 46th Airmobile Brigade in the Zaporizhia region, and two attacks in Luhansk on Monday. The Kremlin's claims have not been independently verified.
By contrast, the ISW reported on Monday that Russian forces conducted offensive operations on the Kupiansk Svatov Kremlin line, near Bakhmut, along the Avdivka Donetsk city line, and in western Donetsk, and did not make any confirmed advances. Elite Russian units deployed to recently liberated Robotai. The Russian military command continues to expend relatively elite Russian Airborne Forces BDV, by deploying them to defend vulnerable positions against Ukrainian counter-offensives, the ISW reported. Intelligence footage gathered over the weekend indicates that the Russian military command deployed elements of the Russian 76th Air Assault Guards Division to reinforce positions near Robotyne, likely arriving from the Luhansk region. ISW had previously observed that elements of almost all Russian air assault formations are operating in areas where Ukrainian forces are conducting counteroffensive operations. The ISW projected that the reliance upon and degradation of these forces will likely weaken Russia's ability to sustain complex defensive operations and almost certainly disrupt any intent to resume offensive operations at scale. Zelensky promises stepped up domestic weapons production. President Volodymyr Zelensky met on Monday with the Ministry of Strategic Industries Ukrobarankram, as well as the heads of Ukrainian companies who produce drones, missiles, artillery and armored vehicles, with the goal of increasing domestic production. We are maximizing production capacity. Ukraine can do it. Funding is available. Our defense industry will yield better results, Zelensky said in his daily statement. Operations, Luhansk. Russian units attacked Ukrainian positions on the Kupiansk Svatov line on Monday, and reportedly made limited advances on the front line. A Russian millblogger claimed that the occupying forces seized two Ukrainian positions in the Sinkivka Petropavlivka sector, 9 km northeast and 6 km east of Kupiansk, respectively. Another Kremlin affiliate blogger added that swampy terrain and continuous minefields in the Kupiansk direction create serious problems for Russian advances in this area. Operations, Donetsk. Ukrainian forces conducted offensive operations near Bakhmut and advanced on Monday. Deputy Defense Minister Hanna Malyar reported that Ukrainian forces had pushed Russian forces out of positions east of Klashivka, 7 km southwest of Bakhmut, and in the center of the settlement and are continuing to advance along Bakhmut's southern flank. Meanwhile, Russian forces conducted offensive operations near Bakhmut and reportedly advanced. The Ukrainian general staff reported on its Facebook page however that Russian forces conducted unsuccessful offensive operations near Klashivka. The General Staff of Ukraine's Armed Forces reported on August 30 that Russia had lost 262,410 troops in Ukraine since the beginning of its full-scale invasion on February 24 last year. This number includes 570 casualties Russian forces suffered just over the past day.